this week on the Internet Series, we're going to talk about all the topics you missed during the week. And first up, we have Ubisoft deleting your games. So Ubisoft pulled the plug on the crew servers a while ago, and the crew is basically a car MMO. You drive around a big open world and do fun little car quests. So the servers being turned off is kind of a big deal. And Ubisoft being Ubisoft decided they don't want you to ever play this game again because they're deleting it from people's game libraries. So to be clear, so we're all on the same page. If you bought this game, Ubisoft is going to just take it away. You will never be able to play it again. I think this is the first time a publisher has revoked a game license after taking down the servers. And I think it's a horrible practice. I imagine they're doing this because fans of the crew were making fan servers and not playing the Crew Motorfest, the newest crew game. And personally, I will never be buying the Crew Motorfest and potentially any Ubisoft game in the future ever again. I mean, I haven't for years anyways. The most recent Ubisoft game I bought was Anno 1800, and I bought that five years ago when it came out. I also assume this is part of Ubisoft's strategy to make gamers comfortable with not owning their games, but I don't think this is going to work out for Ubisoft. They're already the worst AAA publisher in the industry, at least in my opinion. But no one seems to really like Ubisoft. Skull and Bones was a colossal failure, and they were hyping that game up for multiple years. Like, when's the last time Ubisoft made a game people liked? But instances like this make me want to buy physical things again, especially Blu-rays, as weird as that might be. Because Funimation has also pulled a bunch of movies recently that people literally bought. Like, it wasn't just a subscription, they literally bought it. But if you don't want to get your money stolen by Ubisoft, I recommend never buy their games again, because anything that is online that Ubisoft has published has the potential of ending up just like the crew. Next up in gaming news, we have Diablo 4 being the most played on Xbox. And the only reason I bring this up is because this is a huge failure on Blizzard's part, because Diablo was a game that PC players really liked. And the fact that they lost that player base is a pretty big fumble, because PC players should be the ones playing this game the most. And the fact that they didn't release player numbers shows that, yeah, it's not doing great. It's really easy to tell if an Activision Blizzard game is doing well, because if it is, they'll talk about the player numbers. And if it's not, they'll say something like this. All right, next up, we have Mark Gurman leaking plans to add a camera to the Apple TV. And I've talked about Mark Gurman before, but to remind people, this dude has like an 80% accuracy when it comes to Apple leaks. If he leaks something about Apple, it's more than likely going to happen. But the Apple TV camera would enable gesture controls, and I assume also FaceTime, which is kind of weird. And the angle would also be weird. I don't think gesture controls are that crazy for the Apple TV. It makes sense since they already have the software because they made it for the Vision Pro. I just don't see much of a use for me personally, but I am sure that someone is foaming at the mouth to try the Apple TV gesture controls. I will say that with how thin TV bezels have gotten recently, if they're expecting this thing to sit in front of my TV, it better be smaller than the current Apple TV because the current one is small, but it's very thick. And if you put it in front of a TV, it would probably block part of the screen on a lot of TVs, but that's pretty much it. Moving on, Microsoft is killing Cortana. And honestly, thank God it took long enough, but they're replacing it with Copilot. And hearing this news just made me sincerely hope that Microsoft gets sued by the DOJ because they're doing the exact things they got sued for a while ago with Microsoft Edge and they're trying to put ads in Windows 11. I already paid for the bloated, slow, degrading operating system. Stop making it worse. For example, why are there at least two different sets of setting menus for the same things? I get it. They're trying to keep compatibility through the entire operating system's lifetime. But if you can't make the user experience good, it shouldn't be sold. This two settings menu thing has been an issue since Windows 8. And Microsoft Copilot is just more garbage bloatware that is only useful for people in nursing homes. Seriously, I think the most disappointing thing about AI is the fact that all the stuff that should be useful is useless because it's made for people that don't know how computers work. Like, why can't a robot sift through Google and actually find what I want? Why is it difficult? It just needs to find keywords. It it really shouldn't be hard but cortana should have never been released it could have been really good and cortana was a really good name but they released it in a lobotomized state so no one used it ever like i'm sorry microsoft google and open ai i just want an ai that does things i can't do like find super niche articles that i know exist i don't need cortana or copilot to open my settings menu all right next up we have youtube playables and this is buried in the youtube explore section it's basically mobile games on your browser on youtube which is interesting especially since there's a lot of them and i don't know where they come from the games are your typical play if you're bored types and it's just interesting that this exists and they have said nothing about it if i had to guess where all these games are coming from i'd probably say the google play store because i don't know any other place just many games could come from youtube will also probably monetize this somehow in the future but as of now they're just there if you want to check it out and you can't find it just type in youtube.com forward slash playables and it will pop up but yeah really weird from youtube and also super interesting the fact this wasn't found for months probably means there's a bunch of stuff that no one knows exists on youtube and next up we have twitch finally adding a rewind button on live streams for some context youtube streaming is always had this but on twitch they never did it for some reason so now on twitch you'll be able to rewind a live stream while it's playing so if you miss something you're not just stuck wondering what happened definitely a needed feature for twitch i am surprised it took this long like seriously oh my god youtube's had this since inception and next up roku has gotten hacked which is kind of funny because they just made a video called roku sucks about their stupid patent to advertise through hdmi cables but a little under 600,000 accounts were compromised from roku roku states that no personal information such as credit cards or addresses have been leaked and roku in response to this enabled all two-factor authentication on all accounts regardless if it was to be on or not, which I think is an overall pretty good move. Roku also states that the breach probably wasn't on their end. They think it was another source that leaked the information, which would make sense because Roku is a total user base of 80 million. So 600,000 
and is an extremely small number in comparison. But this is a good reminder to never use the same password for anything important. And if you can get a password manager, it helps a lot. And they also randomly generate passwords that are extremely difficult to brute force. Seriously, don't use the same password for everything. Leaks like this happen all the time. It is likely your password is already leaked if it's the same one everywhere. And next up, we have Spotify Remix. This is an interesting feature they're planning on adding in the future. It gives you the ability to speed up or slow down music on your Spotify. And my thought when I read this was the Nightcore audience must be going crazy for this feature right now. It will also allow you to mash up songs and edit songs, whatever that actually entails. They really didn't give much information, so I'm thinking they haven't thought through all the details about that. Editing and mashing up songs, though, will definitely only be available on their new premium super duper tier. And speeding up and slowing down songs will probably be available on their base tier. None of this is really set in stone, to be clear. And Spotify is not known for sticking to the roadmap. I remember they announced Lossless Music Streaming a while ago, and they're just now getting to it. So this could be a while. But if the editing features are good, it could justify the super duper uber premium price tier. Next up, we have Apple sending out a big warning to certain iPhone users that their phones were targeted by mercenary spyware, which is kind of crazy. I saw this pop up and I thought it was going to be about a scam, but no, Apple actually sends these out to people who have dangerous malware on their phones. I think it's a good thing. Cyber warfare has really been heating up in the last five years or so. So notifying people that they're being spied on when they're literally government officials is overall pretty good. Ideally, everyone would play fair and not spy on each other, but that's never going to happen. So at least Apple is notifying people that they're being spied on. But I will say, if you're a government official, you should probably be way more careful. It's crazy that this happened enough to people to become a news story because all the people who received this notification are people who have insanely important secrets that they need to keep secret around the entire world. There should not be this many people with important secrets that have malware on their phone. Step up your security, man. And next up, we have a game I am super hyped for called Manor Lords. It's a medieval town builder that lets you walk around the town and also fight in battles with your citizens, which is super cool. And there's only one other game that does that. It's called Mountain Blade. And that game is basically a template for modders. So I am hoping this game scratches that same itch. This game comes out on April 26 and it's the most wishlisted game on Steam full stop. It is a lot of hype behind it. And if anyone from this studio or publisher is watching for some reason, please give me a key. DM me on Twitter, please. <laughs> I really want to play this game like right now. And I see you're giving it to streamers, so you should give it to me too, right? But they recently released system requirements and they're pretty modest with only a GTX 1060 and i5 being recommended. I just hope that's true because recently I feel like almost all hardware recommendations for almost all games have just been wrong. But I don't think this is going to end up being like City Skylines 2 where the game comes out and it's absolutely broken and bad. First off, it's releasing an early access, so it's not going to be a full release game like City Skylines 2. So if it is buggy, it's not going to be as big of an issue. And they've also done demos before. And all the people who have played the demos say it's already more polished than City Skylines 2. So I am hopeful. It's also not a AAA studio making this game, so it probably will be fine. Because the more money a company has, the worse their games tend to be. Next up, we have the human AI pin. And oh my God, this thing is an utter failure. It's supposed to be this AI device you can talk to and clip to your shirt and use to replace your phone. It has a palm projection feature to show you things. And apparently that's horrible to use and overly sensitive. It's also only 720p and doesn't work in the sun. It also has terrible sound quality. It overheats and the voice controls just don't work very well. Overall, this project does nothing thing that it promised it would do. And you might be thinking, well, it can't be that expensive, right? Wrong. It's $700. On top of that, it requires a $24 a month subscription to even use. This is probably the worst tech product to be released in the last decade. And I'm not exaggerating. It serves no purpose. It's super expensive. And the purpose it's supposed to serve sucks. It looks kind of good though, I guess. And next up, we have Fallout 1 and Fallout 4 lore. Basically in Fallout 1, this guy watches a buddy brutally murder a citizen. And in Fallout 4, they're the same person. In Fallout 4, you play as a character are complicit with the murder of innocents. Oh, and the Fallout TV show came out and it's actually really well received. I did not expect that. Props to make it a good show. I'm glad it doesn't suck. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, do follow me on Twitter, add spends, one click, answer, and check out more of my content and have a good one.